We are all spoiled by modern westerns. A lot of myths about the Wild West have come straight from the movie screen into our lives. Do you want to know how it really happened? For example, what do you associate the word cowboy with? Surely a Stetson hat, leather leg covers, a horse, and, of course, two revolvers in an open holster would immediately come to mind. Well, almost like that. A cowboy is first of all a shepherd. They did prefer wide-brimmed hats, sun protection, but they also wore bowler hats, leather leg covers as protection against thorny bushes is also a necessity. The horse is clear, but almost no one carried to revolvers. Well, that's just heavy. Each one is two to three kilograms plus ammo. And considering that to shoot, you had to cock the trigger with one hand and pull the trigger with the other. The second barrel was just unnecessary. Of course, you can cock the trigger with your thumbs, but the rate of fire and accuracy then generally falls below the plinth. Besides, the gunpowder was not smokeless back then at all. That is, after each shot, there was a thick cloud of smoke between the shooter and the target. What kind of target shooting is this? The favorite weapon of cowboys, as well as criminals and officers of the law, was the shotgun, which was called a collector's shotgun. It was, in fact, a regular double-barreled, large-caliber hunting rifle. This, by the way, made up for the lack of accuracy. In those days, a good shooter was considered to be one who could put six bullets into a postal envelope a square with a side of 12.5 centimeters at 10 paces, three times, and yet in those turbulent times, why did some men beat others under equal fighting conditions? Wild Bill Hickcock explained it this way to his friend who beat him at target shooting. You can beat me at shooting those little black spots but if it comes to shooting people, I'll beat you. It was not superior marksmanship and swiftness in handling weapons that distinguished the heroes of the Wild West from the common men, but inner toughness, equanimity, and complete indifference to their own and others' lives. Even the number of men killed was not always an indication of a fighter's seriousness Bat Masterson or John Ringo had two or three bodies on their books, but they had such a strong character that it was enough to cool the fervor of squabbling fans, and without a trail of bodies, they were considered extremely dangerous men. But even among such fighters, few dared to go head to head in a fair duel, which the worst westerns are not without. A duel in which the cold-blooded, ruthless fighters faced off on a dusty street that was instantly deserted. The fact is that the kind of people who would say a few quips and then quickly draw their revolvers and shoot each other was a very rare thing. In the real Wild West, such scenes became classic only thanks to tablet novels and the Hollywood and then Italian westerns that flooded the world's screens few people. Even excellent marksmen in their right mind would dare to do such a heroic deed. As one researcher sarcastically observed, it is enough to look at the surgical instruments of the period to understand the wisdom of people who did not want to be shot in reality we know from Westerns open revolver holsters began to be produced only in the 50s of the 20th century, especially for Hollywood. Genuine holsters implied a deep recess of the gun to protect it from the ubiquitous dust, and they often had a large flap. No one wanted a heavy, uncomfortable and inaccurate revolver to fail at the most necessary moment. Yes, times were brutal, skirmishes numerous, 
and sentiments on popular enemies were usually killed from around corners in the dark and armed or from behind famous fighters such as Jesse James, Wes Harden, and Wild Bill Hickok were shot in the back of the head, and the infamous Billy the Kid was shot by Pat Garrett, a former colleague lurking in a dark room who had switched sides, and yet duels did happen. People who had the courage to engage in them were cold gan fighters, this term in Russian language literature is usually translated as shooters, which does not accurately reflect its essence. A gunman is anyone who makes a living with a gun. Whether he is a gangster or a lawman, the Texan Bill Longley, for example, has killed many people, but has always avoided face-to-face -face confrontations, trying to take his opponent's by surprise. That's why he can't be considered a gunfighter. Wild Bill Hickok, on the other hand, was one because he went into open fights. The gunfighter era began after the Civil War and peaked in 1870-1880, sweeping Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Oklahoma, California, Missouri, and Colorado. The war between the North and the South produced a large number of outlaws, many of whom were from the Southern Partisan Uni, the Quantro Riders, at a time when everyone had the right to bear arms. The Constitution guaranteed this to every American. There were many who wanted to try it out from time to time, and if a man was inebriated and gambled away his rage, he often grabbed a revolver and took it out on those around him. But even such a troublemaker would think twice or even three times before disturbing the peace if a man with a reputation for cold-blooded murder served as sheriff. It may seem strange, but it was often the cold-blooded, calculating killers who made the best representatives of the law in the Wild West. A fine line separated the outlaw from the sheriff. In those dashing times, both solved their problems with guns. 